You go out there, you're shopping for a new car, you think, hey, I want a car that looks like this or performs like that or has this technology that meets the mark. But it's not until three or four or five years once warranty's gone that you realize, well, what a disaster that was. Well, guess what? I'm gonna share a list of some of the worst junk vehicles that my friends have owned and they truly do regret buying. Let's get into it now. Well, my friend bought one of these vehicles and they were grossly disappointed actually by the third year. The first couple of years were great. They enjoyed it. It had all the technology. It was great looking vehicle. It performed well. What was it not to like about it? But a good friend of mine actually bought the previous generation version of this particular engine that you'll find under here. This vehicle was nothing but problems for them and they realized after a short order that they really shouldn't have bought it and grossly regretted their purchase. But what are we talking about here? Well, we have BMW and you'll see the laser lights on here. This actually has the big grills, obviously the big kidney grills, but theirs had these slightly smaller versions. We have some great detail and that's what attracted them to the brand in the first place. Beautiful wheels, obviously we have this new revised detail on there, massive calipers. And of course, we have this beautiful vent on these latest versions with the M here. And as we cycle around, we have these beautiful tail lights. And I will give BMW that. They definitely know how to style a tail light on there on this M50i. And of course, we have a set of beautiful exhaust tips on there. Now it does look very sharp, Hoffmeister kink and all. And the interior is of relatively high quality, feels great. The fit and finish is excellent and the latest iDrive system is better than most other competitors. But I will tell you right now, there was numerous things that started to happen. They couldn't keep a battery in it for one. It seemed to drain the battery every couple of years they had to put a battery in. It seemed like they put three batteries in in that short time that they had the vehicle. So that clearly was a problem. And when they asked around, checked on the forums, it seemed like they were not the only ones dealing with that issue. Another problem was they actually have that hot V. This is that twin turbo V8 called the N63 engine. And it basically has two turbos mounted in the V of the engine. And that generates so much heat under the hood that it ends up causing a lot of other problems from electric issues and melting plastics. You end up developing leaks, which coincidentally, they did develop an actual valve cover gasket leak. And they also had leaks from the pan gasket and they end up having to do a water pump as well. Way too many things to go wrong in that short period of time. But a big issue was they read that on the forums a lot of these issues were attributed to that hot V and they too themselves experienced excessively high oil consumption. The type of oil consumption they had to put almost a liter of oil or they had to crack a quart and basically use a good part of it, you know, anywhere from half to three quarters of that liter every time they filled up the gas tank. So it was using way too much oil. And again, they started reading the forums and realized, especially the earlier generations. Now, the later gens are a little easier, a little better. There's been some refinements on the engine overall, but their earlier generation previous to this had problems and the forums were there to confirm that, that there was issues and there was the BMW care package to associate that, to test for oil consumption issues with that because valve guides were actually melting down because of that excessive heat on the top of the engine. They basically had enough. They had a couple of electronic issues that they couldn't get sorted out and an idle problem too that the vehicle would run well and then randomly it would stall it restart and it was good so there's some kind of an idling issue throttle position sensor problem not sure but it was chocked full of problems we also can't forget some of the older generation vehicles also with the air ride suspension and the airbags that leak down and then you have a problem you're talking two three thousand dollars to get that properly sorted where you come out and the airbags let go and that vehicle sitting on its rear end sitting on the ground that's usually a sign that your airbags are shot and you need to fix that could also be the air compressor but they had lots of problems it seemed like every month there was some kind of issue they had to call a dealer about a problem or a question or a follow-up and it spent way too much time in the shop and not enough time on the road they decided to pitch it. And honestly, they should have listened to me and I actually tell everybody, if you need to have the X5, go with the twin scroll single turbo B58 engine, which is the three liter six. So it's a friend of a friend that actually bought one of these little vehicles here. They loved it at first because it was relatively affordable, but after owning it for about two years, they started to realize that there are some problems. Let me explain some of the things that they either heard or experienced themselves. What we're looking at, they got a basic headlights and we're talking about a Hyundai right there. Obviously Hyundai and Kia, brothers from another mother and both have issues. Of course, yeah, they have cute little vents and details and you can get alloy wheels in there. Look at that little mirror, beautiful. Oh, look, nothing on top, but that's okay because some of the ones that are equipped with the sunroof would known to shatter, so at least they didn't have that issue either. You get basic handles, that's very simplistic. One thing that they did comment with their brakes wore out a little bit too soon and they thought that they changed them a little too often. 
Okay, the Elantra GT by Hyundai is the vehicle that was highly regrettable because it looks kind of cute. It looks a little sporty and it's cheap, as I say, and good on gas. So that was all well and good. But there were some other problems. Let's look inside. The infotainment system crapped out on them several times and other electrics seem to be kind of glitching out from time to time. Could never really figure it out. But I've also heard that soy wiring was a potential issue with some of these, kind of like what Honda's using, where the, once the, mo the rodents and the mice get in there, it could be trouble. But also, after they owned it for a while, they were getting excessive oil consumption. In other words, a little engine like this, you should never really add a whole lot of oil to it. Even though a lot of four-cylinder engines do consume a little bit, it seemed like they were adding a lot more than they should. So we went to the dealer and they found out that they were actually notoriously known for oil consumption and there were a lot of problems related to engine knock. Now, as a matter of fact, they did develop a bottom end rod knock noise and they ended up trading the vehicle in before it was too soon, before it actually went boom. But the reality is rod knock, pistons, oil scraper rings, unfortunately oil consumption, lots of engine issues. Once, it actually happened once, about a month before they traded in, all of a sudden randomly, they had the vehicle lined up with the dealer to take a trade in, and just before they took it in, it glitched out and they couldn't get the vehicle out of gear, it was locked in. So there seems to be some transmission issue. I've since done there's some research, and clearly transmissions have been a bit of a known issue. So it's not a ve great vehicle, and those friends of ours definitely regretted it, would never go back anywhere near to that vehicle. Sad state of affairs. And the third vehicle that makes the list for vehicles that have actually had friends that have regretted buying. I had a friend that actually bought one of these vehicles. This is the Midnight Edition. They got the regular version of this. But obviously, as you can see with the front grille, we're talking about a Nissan. And yeah, they do have some great styling detail on the headlights and beautiful black wheels on this version. Of course, we have this beautiful mirror here. And you do get a sunroof on top. Of course, they have a little wing on the back. And again, it's a Nissan, but this is the Midnight SR version, and it's all-wheel drive, but it's an Altima. Of course, they do have some great exhaust tips down there, and some fake little plastic, like everybody has these days. Some great little detail, I love the looks of this. Smells a little bit like the products from Infinity. The interior doesn't look bad. It actually probably looks like it's punching slightly above its weight class and looks very similar to the product from Infinity, which is its other upscale brother. But these friends of ours actually complained that that CVT, the continuously variable transmission, is a clunky little mess. Slips, jerks, and it doesn't really respond as you would hope. Sometimes you get the CVT light, and then of course it means a high dollar for maintenance. They also had door lock actuators right here. These are not uncommon to know to failure. Of course, we had failures with the sunroof and generally it just doesn't feel like a well put together car. Yes, it's quiet when you're cruising down the road, but it also is susceptible to clunking and banging and noises when you're hitting down the road. So it's a very cool car, but basically they regretted every minute of it and decided they should have went with a Camry instead. Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. Yeah, this is not one of those vehicles. This is very, very cool, I'm not gonna lie. But this here is the next vehicle that a lot of people regret. And I actually got a friend that had one of these Range Rovers here and by Land Rover. It's a fun product. Yeah, it's beautiful, it's luxurious. It's sexy, absolutely. Yeah, it has some great detail. Look at these vents. That is absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, we're talking about a Range Rover, but this is the Sport. Yeah, look at that LED strip on there. And of course, you got the little one-touch accent in. Of course, you got massive glass roof on top. It means it allows a lot of light inside for all the happy customers inside this vehicle. And yeah, you have those gorgeous little rocker panels down here and those amazing wheels. Of course, here on the front end, a few little rock chips along the way fit for a king, it is gorgeous inside. But the friend of mine that actually owned one of these Range Rover Sports realized in short order that that maybe wasn't the perfect vehicle for him. He had to fix the air ride suspension that went out on him. He had to constantly pour large amounts of fuel because it's heavy on gas. Of course, there was, he had a fuel injector problem go on him. And as well, he had some weird noises from the front differential. He had a squeaky electric brake situ situation. The infotainment system was froggy and floggy on him and he had to actually get it rebooted with newer firmware and of course, they I give you that SIM card, which it flaked out too. So he had a lot of little nickel and dime issues, which for the most part, the vehicle was beautiful to drive in, but he had so many issues it made him wonder. The other problem was every time he go to sleep and wake up in the morning, he realized that that vehicle was probably worth about a 
$500 less because these vehicles suffer such brutal depreciation. It wasn't just the reliability factors, it was actually the value of the vehicle was going up in smoke every single time he blinked or went to sleep. So that was one of the biggest guilt trips he ever had was owning one of these Range Rovers. Yes, sure, he loved it. It was great to drive when it was fun, when it was frivolous, and when it was out on the open road. It was amazing and probably one of the best vehicles you can get if you're just looking for that experience. But there's too many other realities associated with this vehicle that he just got sick to his stomach and had to pitch it and truly, truly regretted the Range Rover experience. And another vehicle here that actually a friend of mine, a really close friend of mine bought, similar to this, is red as well. And they really regret buying this for a couple reasons. But let me be clear, it's not so much that they hate the vehicle because there's a lot of things that they love about this vehicle. And they've been driving it for the last year and change and they love a lot of things. They love the plug and play, they love some of the techie and they love the fact that it's got some punchy performance. So they clearly love this modern Teslas but they also have the Tesla Model Y similar to this. Let's give you a rundown why they actually do regret buying it at least a year and a half ago. Their vehicle, they had some issues with fit and finish issues. They've had to bring it in for adjustments this one here actually looks pretty good. They actually had one of those generations where it seemed to suffer from some fitment issues, panel gap problems. They also had some clunky front end noise. So they had some of those loose bolts and fitment issue problems with their particular vehicle. Yeah, everything else worked pretty fine in theirs. And I could speak to that as well because I had one there for about two months last year and I had a problem where I opened the door and normally your center screen should light up, but it didn't. And it actually had to force and close it, open and close, reboot. And then finally after about 10 minutes, the car came alive. So clearly it was going through some, either a reboot or an update or what, I don't know. And they saw some kind of a similar glitch as that as well. So that is kind of one of those things that kind of make you scratch your head and they kind of regret the purchase in the sense of the unknowing. What does this look like in terms of glitchiness? It's like a cell phone or computer. Do you have to reboot it once in a while? So they're kind of regretting the idea of where they're at with this and the technology and whether they jumped in a little too soon. But one of the other things they grossly regret about buying their Tesla was that they bought it a year and a half ago. Now clearly if you've been watching, Tesla has made some major pricing adjustments in the last year or so. They've actually sliced it two or three times now to the point where now you can get the same model for substantially less than you could a year and a half ago. So now they're regretting jumping in so quickly. Sure they took advantage of some of the other benefits and incentives but they lost out on the price of the vehicle and they actually had to pay a lot more than they probably should have. If you're buying today, you're getting a better deal. So they truly do regret buying their Tesla Model Y. I had a friend that bought actually one of these and what we're looking at here is actually a Genesis right here. And this is a vehicle that he actually grossly wishes he didn't buy, totally regrets it. Now, it's not because, you know, it actually does have some great styling accents. Look at that front grille, looks great. Big vents, nice wheels, red calipers, and extra vents there. Big mirrors, almost looks like the Jaguar style mirror. Big glass sunroof on top. It feels like a high-end luxury car for sure in a lot of aspects. Of course, you have these great little details. And look, exhaust tips down in there and a little splitter down there to boot. What we're looking at is the G70 by Genesis. This is a 3.3 liter turbo. And it's an all-wheel drive system. Of course, it's a great looking vehicle. It has the quilted stitching and lots of great detail inside. It actually does feel like an upscale car. And honestly, when you put it side by side between say a modern day Audi or a Benz, it feels like every bit of the same car. The downside is of course, because these were popular, the G70 and the GV70 actually went even worse. Mid last year is when he bought and the GV70 went for about 28% over sticker in the average case. He also paid about 25% over sticker price. Now that the dust is settled, he's starting to wonder and scratch his head, should I have spent that kind of money? I think the time has come and gone and people have spent what they've spent, but now here we are have a car that's going to suffer natural depreciation and I just overpaid is really where he's coming from. There's the other piece there too where because it's a Hyundai product, there's still a slight bit of reluctance about where the reliability is going. I mean, there's a lot of issues with engines, you know, in recent years. And of course, that's just one of those things that's always in the back of his head right there. So it's one of those cars he kind of regrets. If he got a discount or a deal, he'd probably feel better about it. But because he overpaid and then there's all those other issues looming, 
he definitely regretted the G70. Get your merch at Exotic Car Play Place under Get Our Gear. You're going to love it. Join the ECPP community. The next car that is grossly regrettable, a friend of mine actually came to me and said, you know, you drive BMWs for a lot of years. What about this new car? Well, it was slightly used. They found this BMW like this. It was a 330 and it was a 2012 model year. And they said, hey, should I buy one of those? They're pretty reliable. They've got this turbo four cylinder engine and it's great. And I said, no, no, no. That has what you call the N20 engine but they refused to listen. They said, you know what? I just need something that's good on fuel, a good runabout. I don't need a high performance M car. I just want something that's cheap and dirty. And I warned them. I said, no, don't do it. But guess what? Now, unfortunately, those friends of ours are grossly regretting it because that car is very, very similar, almost identical to the car that we're parked right here. What we're looking at here is BMW and look, tow hook why because it's broken it won't drive and it can't get here on its own power you know it's got some great details everybody loves a bmw right it's like everybody loves a baby well not the same what we have there is a little fold away mirrors with leds and those simple handles they're rugged little sunroof it's good of course you have all these nice great details and led strips on the back you got that exhaust tip all carboned up look at all that soot on there absolutely and of course it's a great presence other than all the garbage and scraps, it's not bad. It's well made and it wears very, very well. But I warned them and unfortunately they ended up experiencing some of the same issues now. They started to get that infamous chain rattle. Now they didn't have a catastrophic failure, but I'll tell you right now, the timing chain rattle is just a, a precursor to what can happen and what will happen with a lot of these N20 engines where they pile up. And if your timing chain breaks, skips a cog because of the garbage plastic timing chain ramps, well, then you're basically up the creek. I'm going to end up having to replace the entire engine or rebuild a part of it because you'll have pistons and valves connecting up where they shouldn't be connecting up. So that was one problem. What they did experience though was lots of coolant leak repairs, water pumps. Yes, that's a problem. They also had all kinds of thermostat and fittings and hoses and radiators they had parts starting to weep and leak every which way and they only had it for about three years and then unfortunately oil leaks came in they had the infamous oil filter housing start to suck in the oil filters that also start to leak there as well and they just found themselves constantly tinkering with this car now the one guy he's a little bit of a do-it-yourselfer so he was able to wrench on some of it but the problem was it just became to a point where Every second or third week, he was having to chase down the jobber parts store and try to pick up some parts and plan a day off just so he could spend it on the driveway, fixing more coolant or oil leaks. The car was a notorious beast. It also used a lot of oil, I will say that. And unfortunately, like I said, the timing chain rattle was starting to come into gear. That's the worst part. It was just a matter of time. Then they just decided the hell with it. Enough is enough. I truly regret it. And they did. Because it was in the state that it was, they couldn't get a whole lot of money for it. As you know, BMWs do depreciate. So they actually literally told me that's the last BMW they will buy. And that's unfortunate because no two BMWs are like, and there are some that aren't bad. Bad. The newer generation of the four cylinder called the B48 is actually quite reliable and the B58 is not bad either. So if you're going to buy one, get the Turbo 4 and the Turbo 6 in later years from say 2017 and 18 and up. Those are your best bets. Sadly, I also know somebody who actually bought one of these little junk boxes. And what we're looking at is a car that literally ended up scrapping itself because of the problems that it actually experienced. But sadly, the owners, after paying about $7,000 for a slightly used 2014 model year, they had to scrap the car entirely and lost everything they put into it. But what are we dealing with here? Basic wheels, of course, pretty basic. We got hubcaps on that junk. And of course, there's, look at the little headlights, so basic on this Chevy. Yeah, it's a no frills commuter car. That's what the intent was at $13,000 brand new. Yeah, it seemed like a great deal. Yeah, lots of plastic, no sunroof because it's no frills. Pretty basic interior. As you can see down below, you have that wonderful little transmission and that's the point of contention right here. Now, it's not that every cheap car has to be junk, but the problem is when a cheap piece of junk car ends up breaking catastrophically, i.e., for example, the engine or transmission giveaway, they're usually enough to scrap the vehicle because with combination of depreciation usually leaves a vehicle in two or three years to be worth half or less than its original value. Then you combine that with some of the problems that you'll experience along the way usually means you're going to be in a predicament and that's what happened so their car suffered some heavy oil consumption that's one of the common issues we have suspension problems they had premature brake wear and there's a bit of a shimmy on the front end almost from day two it seemed like about a year and a half in at least that's what they told me anyway they start to get a bit of a shake and the car overall has a very cheap hollow plasticky tinny kind of sound to it when you open a slam a door but that's to be expected it's no frills really where this went wrong 
was at one point they ended up losing the transmission. And that's the worst part. As I mentioned, that's one of the most expensive pieces. The transmission started slipping, 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 bang, and it would start doing that kind of stuff. And then at one point it just stopped altogether. They took it in for diagnosis. Lo and behold, they were told you're gonna to be spending about $4,000 on a new transmission. Well, guess what? The car was only worth roughly that at that time. And they end up making that executive decision and sent that thing to the dumpster. It's a sad state of affairs, but basically a garbage car. So you gotta be careful when you're investing money into something something like this that you're getting something that's dependable reliable and cheap to fix and sadly for a Chevy it wasn't the case and it definitely wasn't one of those cars that they should have bought and they truly truly regret the Chevy Spark and I really feel bad because another one that actually friends asked me about and I said stay away from the Jeep products unless you're a glutton for punishment but they clearly just wanted the association with Jeep they liked the TJ and the Wranglers but they didn't necessarily have the full money for it so they realized that they want something that's a little more you know all-encompassing a little SUV that they thought hey it's a Jeep it's gonna be great all-wheel driving and all obviously off-roading they felt that that, hey, that's a great answer for us, a great solution for, for some of our practicality concerns. The vehicle behind me here is the very vehicle that they actually bought and then grossly regretted it. Yeah, it is a Jeep and that's why they bought it in the first place. Yeah, it has the little hooks on there and it has a basic set of headlights like many do. Of course, it has alloy wheels and a simple little mirror. Look at that. Oh, simple handle. And what we're talking about is the Jeep Compass right there. And it has little plastic guardings around there to protect the body from stones and rocks from kicking up. And yes, it is a four x four. And yes, it's a Jeep as mentioned. So people assume these are great for off-roading, but you couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, it has a great set of dual exhaust tips there. Looks sporty and aggressive. Even has this weird looking set of aftermarket looking rear tail lights, even though they're not aftermarket, they look that way. And you've got a fairly vertical rear finishing, which does maximize the space capability in the back there. And inside, it basically feels like one of those hollowed out barrels with a bunch of brass monkeys in the bottom. And all of the fake trim aluminum look seems like it's spray painted. It doesn't feel of high quality, but you do have that nice contrast type stitching throughout. And so they found out the hard way. Unfortunately, a lot of the problems that are well known and well documented about these vehicles, they actually experienced some of them. And what are some of the problems you would actually expect? Well, there's been a lot of controversy around the overall ride quality being bouncy and rough and jagged, not really feeling quality or refined. Okay, sure, one would argue, okay, maybe that's just the way a Jeep should be, sure. But there's people are complaining with the expectation of driving a Jeep and yet people are still complaining about it. Brakes are an issue there. We also talk about oil consumption and sludge. There's been lots of complaints around that. And of course, specifically, if you're talking about the 2.4 liter, hey, you remember the old Tiger Shark that some of the Jeeps are running? Oil consumption is clearly an issue and actually stalling. So sometimes driving and going to accelerate and the vehicle stalls, you know what, you talk about a dangerous situation and they found a couple of stalling events with their vehicle and nobody should expect a vehicle that stalls in today's day and age when we're talking about fuel injected vehicles, that's ridiculous. But they did have some of those issues. The real problem isn't just some of the drivability concerns that you would expect from these vehicles, which clearly there were some drivability issues. There were some other big time problems here and it's not just electrics, which we know that's part of the issue, but it's that nine speed automatic transmission that you would package in here. Some would argue that that's one of their better party pieces, but unfortunately it's been a bit of a problem and that causes troubles too, where it's misshifts or delays or it's too juddery. And a lot of it, some people say it's electrics and wiring. Other people say it's a quick scan, a software update, and then you're good to go. But suffice it to say, it's been rough and lurchy and there's nothing about the vehicle that smells as good as it possibly should. And they've been dealing with fuel consumption, oil consumption, rough riding, and just nickel and dime trips to the dealer. There seems to be a lot of needs and necessities to have this thing down to the dealership. They basically said, you know what, package it up, polish it up real nice like polishing a turd, and then they traded it in for something else. They said, I'll never buy another one of those because it's clearly not living up to the Jeep name. And with all of that said, right there, check it out. That's this year's best cars. My recommendations for fun, technologically packed, and performance-oriented type vehicles. You're gonna love it, 2023's best vehicles. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye.